Hey guys, Dean here. So I'm back to show you another launcher. Yesterday I showed you the Solve launcher. Today I'm going to be showing you the SK launcher. So this is a really popular Minecraft launcher that a lot of people have been asking me about. I made a video a few months ago on the top 10 best Minecraft launchers to download. This was one of the ones that I featured, but I want to give a more in-depth guide video on this one today. So I'm going to show you how to download and install it and get started. And I'm going to kind of tell you a brief description and overview of what the launcher is, what its capabilities are, and what you can actually do with it. Because this is going to be really great for you guys who are playing modded minecraft particularly who want to play certain mod packs so it's a secure launcher right and it has a very simplistic look to it and a really simple interface it has high speed and it's a lightweight launcher so it shouldn't take up too much space in your computer and it has some pretty cool features for example it has built-in mod loaders so if you're installing fabric forge or quilt you can enable them pretty quickly and easily inside the installation process inside the sk launcher mod packs are also enabled so you can search for mod packs. They have a few on their platform. You can search a lot of the popular ones, you know, from Curse Forge, but more so custom ones, which are exclusive to the SK Launcher too. It's also lightweight and has frequent updates. So the skin and cape management in here too. If you've logged in, you have access to all of these features and also you can join the Discord for further support. So we're going to scroll all the way to the top. We do have a servers list too. So they do have a built-in server list, which is going to be coming soon. But what we want to do is we want to click on download. So click on download and then we'll be taken to the SK Launcher. 3.1 download page now it might be a later version when you watch this video but it's the same process to install it right now what we're going to do is we're going to scroll down and there's a few different downloads so if you're a windows user you can download this one there's also a linux download and also a max download also a mac download and it shows you what you need to install them for example windows you need java 11 to 18 linux and mac you need 11 to 17 and you can also try this other version as well so we're going to go ahead and we're going to download the windows version so what you want to go ahead and do is i'm going to download the windows version if you're on those other operating systems mac or linux go for the universal version right which is the java.jar i'm going to go for the windows.exe click on the version you want i'm just going to press x on this ad and we'll download our file in the bottom left i've switched to the chrome browser i was using opera before but it's the same similar browser basically i'll go in your downloads folder or wherever you save your files right double click sklauncher.exe and let's run it and it's going to update the launcher files and start installing it to our computer and it's also going to download java if you haven't installed it but if you do have any issues i'd recommend doing a fresh installation of java 2. now as soon as sk launcher opens you can either switch it to offline mode as it shows here or we can log into our microsoft account now i'm going to log into my microsoft account so i'm going to click on my microsoft account and for the most part if you're already logged in you can just accept the permission and just link it without having to type in your details again so a lot of launchers will be doing this now just so you don't type in your details just straight into the launcher it's kind of like a trust thing so that's kind of like a thing of the past right so we don't need to enter our details again providing that you're already logged in in like your main browser into the microsoft website so now i've logged in you'll see it says logged in as the blue crusader so i've actually logged into my account so now on the left hand side we have a few different features so we have custom so this is one that we can edit this is probably one which i've already done before or some default profile latest snapshot pretty self-explanatory that's the latest snapshot of probably 1.20.1 or something like that and then we have a few custom profiles the latest release is the latest vanilla release which is non-modded so that'll be 1.20.1 and then we have a few different profiles down here now the reason why i have so many profiles too is actually because sk launcher is taking all this data from my main minecraft launcher so if you have the vanilla minecraft launcher on your pc like i do with a lot of custom profiles in like i do then it's actually using the same data so it's not installing it into its own folder it's using your normal vanilla launcher's data so you can actually just replace it with this launcher so if you don't have minecraft installed before installing this launcher obviously that won't happen but i've already installed it in the vanilla way so that's why i have so many profiles okay and why i have so many of these mod loaders which you won't have obviously i can launch them or i can do a new setup and then obviously if i want to launch them i just select it which one i want to launch and then just click play in the bottom left now we're going to go to launcher settings and go over the settings first of all this is where we can set our language so it's not just english it supports it has a lot of different translations to it you can also change the accents color which is obviously like the text you can change the theme switch it to dark theme we can sort the installations by name or when we last played them I'm going to select it by last played and we can
can also hide default installations so that's like the vanilla ones that i mentioned and also show the launcher console so you can see like bugs and stuff like that this is the launcher console if we want to see things and then installation manager is what we want to do so from here is soon they're going to be adding mods here so you can install mods straight from the launcher but what we want to do first of all is i want to show you how to make a default installation a new one so just click on installations new installation and we're going to name it minecraft modded latest so let's say we wanted to install some mods from Cursed Forge for the latest version of Minecraft, right? What we would do is we'd first figure out what mods we want to install. So you go to cursedforge.com and then we want to see what mod loader those mods require. So if we wanted to play vanilla, you could skip that and just tick vanilla, select the latest release, 1.20.1, top of the list, and then just press more options, change all this, and then press save. But if we want to install a mod loader, we need to select the mod loader we want. Now I like Forge the most, but you can also select Fabric and select the version of the mod loader or quilt for an example which is kind of like a modified version of fabric so when you select the mod loader you'll select the game version the vanilla game on the left and then you'll select the mod loader version for that vanilla game on the right if that makes sense so for an example with forge the minecraft version is on the left and the minecraft forge version for that minecraft version is on the right now if i want to install forge 1.20.1 the latest one i go down to more options and here's where i can customize it more so do i want to load the game in full screen or do i want a custom resolution for me this doesn't really matter I could set it to like 720p, but I'm probably going to enlarge it anyway. Maximum memory, this is where we're going to assign the RAM. So by default, it's on 4 gigabytes, which is usually enough for like running just like one or two mods or a bunch of like mods, like a low amount. 4 to 8 gigabytes is usually enough. But like I said, I have 32, so the max is allowing me is 31.5. This will be based on your hardware. But I usually, as a rule of thumb, just give Minecraft 11 gigabytes because it's far more than enough. And obviously, it's only like a third of my RAM. You obviously need to select this based on your hardware where compatibility mode it disables the skin system launcher visibility so do you want to close the launcher temporarily and reopen when the game closes i'm going to tick that or i'm going to leave that but you can change it with this drop down and then you can change the version of java and here is the argument so if you understand this you can change this but i wouldn't recommend modifying this okay and then just press save and now i have a version here minecraft modded we've just created and if i want to edit it I click on these three dots, press edit installation, and it's basically the same thing, right? I can modify it, change the mod loader, change the game version, and edit it how I like. I could also duplicate it, or I could click on open installation directory and go straight to the Minecraft folder. SK Launcher, what I don't like is it's actually using the default Minecraft folder. So that means all of these modded versions I've already installed that are already cluttering my folder, it's going to use that. So it might crash when we start up because we've already got like folders for loads of stuff. We've got folders for mods so i'm going to x that in fact no i'm not going to x it off i'm going to click new folder here and i'm going to just type in modded 120 just make a random folder i'm going to select this here and i'm going to right click and press cut so i remember where the location is and then i'm going to click these three dots edit installation and game directory i'm just going to paste what i've copied there here and press save and now i'm going to press play and this will run my minecraft game and from here i'm basically going to download the game and download the files and then it's going to save all the game files into that new folder i just created as a sub directory in the default minecraft vanilla folder the reason for this is just so it doesn't crash because it's going to use only our new folder if it used the base folder the default folder which i showed you then it would crash because i already have mods installed there i already have different loader versions in there and profiles and they'll conflict and just crash the game so i'd recommend if you've already installed different profiles or mods in a different version of the game just make a new folder like i showed you how to do just then so it's going to go through the stages you can see what it's doing in the console if you've enabled it if not you can see on this box here so it's installing for for an example we're going to just launch the game once and when we launch the game once after we've let it download then we know that it's created all the files it needs in that folder and it's ready to install mods too now i'm not going to download mods but i'm going to show you where to find the mods folder just so you know how that works so let's just let the game load one time and now we're just letting minecraft load as you can see 1.20.1 it's downloaded the correct version in the bottom right so now minecraft's loaded we can just press quit that seemed pointless but basically we're just doing it like i said to create the files now press three dots in the corner press open installation directory and now it's created all of these files in this new folder we created so now if you would download mods we've already got forge installed so you don't need to install the mod loader you just download the forge mods off whatever mod site you like so we use curseforge.com mostly in the minecraft community and just throw them in the mods folder here and then go back to sk launcher press play restart your minecraft and the mods will be enabled as simple as that what we're going to do now to close out the video 
now is the last thing I'm going to show you is how to install mod packs. So I'm going to just make a new installation manager here. So what you want to do is instead of pressing the plus next to installation manager, just click on installation manager. That will just bring up all of our versions. And now we want to click on mod packs instead of new installation. And now it will show all the mod packs here. Now this is pulling a list of the mod packs from curseforge.com, I believe. I'm not 100% sure. It might actually just pull it from SK Launcher's own library. So correct me if I'm wrong, but I think this is pulling it from CurseForge because all of the popular CurseForge ones are on here. If we do scroll down, there is a limit to the list. It pulls it from CurseForge if you select CurseForge in the top right. There's a little icon. So by default, it's a Modrinth, which is like another mod website for open source mods. So it's showing mod packs only on Modrinth. But if we change this to CurseForge, which clearly has more mod packs, then we can access the whole CurseForge library over here. So you can now see we have basically tons and tons of mod packs. Now, I don't know if it has all the mod packs on Curse or if it just has these ones or if maybe we just have to search for the ones we want. So let me just search for like Decimation, for example. And it does have Decimation, but that is still one of the top mod packs. But you would just search which mod pack you like over here. And then what we could go ahead and do is install it. So I could just click on Dawn Craft for an example. I've made a video on this before. And then we can install Dawncraft through here. Just click on the little arrow next to whichever mod pack you want and it shows you the mod pack info. Now on Mod Rinth, the system works better on here with this launcher. So just select Mod Rinth and then let's just say we'll install Cobblemon. Click on it and it'll show you the versions. So I just recommend clicking install latest because that installs the most stable version. And it's the same process, right? As when we set up our own profile, we're just going to wait for it to download the mod pack. But in this case, it's going to download a lot of mods because this is obviously a mod pack which has a ton of mods in it but this is the cobblemon mod pack so i don't really think it has a ton of mods in it it has like the main mod and then a bunch of quality of life mods so it's not going to really install too much so when it's finished downloading that pop-up box will minimize or disappear and you can see on the left side we now have a new profile cobblemon fabric we can edit it or go into the folder or we can just select it and press play in the bottom left hand side and then this will launch our mod pack so i'm just going to prove to you that it works so now you can see we have cobblemon which is loaded with the custom loading screen and we can access single player and multiplayer and load the mod pack from here. So that was the video on how to install SK Launcher, which I think is a pretty powerful launcher. It has every feature you need for a Minecraft launcher. And it's just a little bit easier than the vanilla launcher to get everything set up. And soon when they add the mod support, not just mod packs, then it'll be so much easier to install everything manually. So hope this video is useful. Leave any comments or questions below in the comment section and I'll try my best to help you out. Smash the like button and subscribe for more Minecraft videos and I'll catch you real soon.